very good evening and welcome to BCN News. The Fono Eke Pule will be meeting tomorrow. However, it's not clear if this is in response to a letter by five members of the Assembly invoking Article 22 of the New Air Constitution. The five members of the Fono Eke Pule, Terry Coe, Vainga Tukuitonga, Olive Jacobson, Crosley Tatui and Stanley Kaloni wrote to the Speaker of the Legislative Assembly invoking Article 22 of the New Air Constitution to call a meeting of the Fono Ekepule. This was using Article 22 of the Constitution of New Air uh, because there had been no meeting um, in the last six weeks. The last meeting was in um, uh, February the 12th and um, our calculation took, took us to the end of, um, of March. Um, and we had to use that because we still had not heard from government if there was going to be a meeting. Um, we served the notice of um, that that required four or more members of the new legislative assembly who are not cabinet ministers can call this meeting. The letter quoted Article 22 of the Constitution under the procedures of the New Air Assembly that if more than six weeks have elapsed since the last meeting of the Assembly, any four or more members of the Assembly may request the Speaker to appoint a place and time for the meeting not earlier than five days, nor later than ten days after the date of the request. It is also confirmed that the members of the Fono Ekapule received their meeting papers on Friday, 3rd April, for a meeting schedule for Wednesday this week, 8th of April. A list of 20 questions are included in the order paper, but no motions will be heard. The Financial Secretary Doreen Sia Tanga also confirmed to BCN News that there will be a supplementary budget tabled at the meeting on Wednesday. The Acting Director of Health, Griselda Mokoya, has ordered that all passengers arriving from New Zealand will be deemed suspected cases and will be transported to a quarantine facility upon arrival. This is pursuant to the New Air Public Health Act 1965. The order states that due to the increasing number of confirmed and suspected cases of community transmission of COVID-19 in New Zealand, the New Air Health Department is taking precautionary measures by issuing this order. All passengers who arrived on yesterday's flight have been deemed suspected cases of a notifiable disease and were subject to medical examination upon their arrival. They have been admitted to a designated quarantine facility and will be subject to medical observation for a period of 14 days. The order states that family members, friends and associates of any of these passengers are ordered to refrain from having any physical contact with any of these passengers whilst they are in isolation or as directed by the Director of Health. Every person who fails to comply with this order commits an offence and is liable to prosecution. After careful deliberation, the government of Niue has agreed measures to fully secure the safety of every aspect of life on Niue. Government states travel to the island will be extremely restricted, with the twice-weekly Air New Zealand flights being cut back to one weekly flight arriving Mondays from Auckland. A small number of passengers can travel on every second week, and this number is based on New Air's ability to manage strict quarantine provisions. Passengers can only travel on every second fortnightly flight when 26 passenger seats will be available and all arrivals will be ferried immediately to the strict 14 days quarantine at a designated quarantine station. There is no self-isolation and all arrivals must agree in writing prior to departure to strict medically monitored police enforced quarantine. If people fail to agree to the strict quarantine, then they will not be allowed to travel to Niue. The order weekly service will maintain national security in medical supplies, food and construction materials and all other critical essentials. The regular flow of these prevents shortages protecting the most vulnerable residents and ensuring everyone who needs this can still access them. The orderly flight service will also ensure anyone on New Air who needs to get to New Zealand for any reason at all can plan to do so with some certainty. It will also ensure that work can be completed on the wharf and other key infrastructure damaged by Cyclone Tino in January, further boosting New Air's resilience.
And a COVID-19 isolation centre has been prepared at the New Air 4 hospital site. The groundworks have been carried out just behind the hospital. With the efforts to prepare, we always hope for the best. But we also have to prepare for the worst. And so in that measure, in that same token, we're preparing um, our facility to cater for, for a possible influx in cases or a possible increase in cases of interest. And so we've got um, uh, people currently working on a foundation that will house five tents or medical, medical grade tents. And we will use these to isolate, use these to manage any cases if they were to arise. So this is part of the preparations for something worse. But we really, really do hope that everything does work well and we don't really have a need to use it. But in case we do, it's there. The Public Service Commission is cautioning public servants who are employed in secondary employment or participating in some form of private business without the approval of the Commission. This cautionary notice was sent out to all public servants on Thursday last week. Currently, the Commission has a list of 38 public servants that have been approved under Regulation 48, Subsection 1. However, the Public Service Commission believe that there are many more employees who have not been honest and are moonlighting. The Commission is uh, therefore allowing an amnesty period up to 30th April 2020 for all public servants that are directly or indirectly receiving a secondary income or engage in any private business to come forward. These include any consultancy or contract work. Sanctions will apply if public servants do not comply with this requirement of the public service regulations. And public servants are back at work after a two weeks break. All government employees had been informed that public service resumed yesterday. PSC is advising all public servants to remain vigilant in their workplaces and ensure safe work practices, washing of hands and distancing as advised by the health authorities, especially when serving customers. Schools are still on a break. Senior students of New High School have been told to contact their teachers to get course materials, particularly for those in NCA levels. There have been no indication as to how long the schools will be closed. And finally, before we go, just a look at the weather. Severe Tropical Cyclone Herald Center, Category 4, was located near 18.2 south, 175.8 east at 7 a.m. today, or about 129 kilometers to the west-southwest of 19 Fiji, or about 1,459 kilometers to the west of Niue, located outside of Niue Cyclone Tracking Map. Cyclone Herald is moving east-southeast at 33 kilometers per hour. Radio New Zealand reports the effects of tropical Cyclone Herald are being felt in most parts of Fiji. The Category 4 cyclone with wind speeds of 170 kilometers per hour and gusts of 240 kilometers per hour is now in Fiji waters. And that's BCN News for tonight. Thank you for joining us. Do join us same time tomorrow. Until then, have a safe evening.